Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to continue with our delay plugin series. And we have two objectives for this tutorial. The first one is going to be that we're going to create some parameters quickly that the user is going to be able to control uh, to adjust this plugin that we're creating. In this case, it's going to be the feedback parameter and delay time parameter. Then we're going to use one of what I call the best kept secrets in Juice uh, to actually control these parameters and create a UI quickly. And this class is called the generic audio processor editor class. So it's a way to actually quickly create a UI that the user is going to be able to test out without needing to actually create dials and sliders yourselves, connect the parameters to these sliders and dials. You can actually do it just from the parameter list itself. And it's a very quick way to get a plugin up and running and test it out without having to do a whole bunch of work. It's very exciting and I hope that uh, you will find it exciting as well. So before we get started, just wanted to tell you about our audio programming community on Discord. So we have nearly 7,000 people from around the world developers of all levels, come join us, theaudioprogrammer.com forward slash community, and I'll put the link below. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we have here is just the same code from our previous tutorial. And as I was saying to you before, uh, currently we have some standard delay times and uh, gains, which is, which is referring to our feedback amount um, that we've just statically put in the plugin just to make sure that we're actually producing a delay in this plugin. And now what we want to do is we want to replace these with some parameters. So in this case, we have uh, this, this uh, little math trick that we're doing right now where we're getting a half second of delay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a parameter that the user is going to be able to adjust. And we will just call that maybe delay MS, uh, so delay in milliseconds. And then this other one will be the actual gain of the delay itself. And we could call that feedback. So what I will do is I will put a feedback parameter in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the juice audio processor value tree state class to actually create this. And I've done uh, tutorials on this before, and it takes quite a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the tutorials just up in the corner, and I'm going to actually do this. And once I'm done with it, I will come back and I'll show you what I've actually created. So I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. So let me take a moment to explain what I've done. I've created two float parameters. Uh, one is called delay MS, as in delay in milliseconds, and the other one is feedback. Uh, so delay in MS uh, goes from 0, 0.0 to 96,000. So I chose 96,000 because I'm thinking if my max sample rate was 48,000 uh, and I wanted two seconds of uh, delay potential delay time, then I would uh, I would have that at ninety six thousand. So that's why I chose that number there. And then feedback is going to be a gain for the uh, actual delay, and I've chose for that to be between zero and one in this case. So if you're not sure what all of this is about, be sure to check out my previous tutorials on the audio processor value tree state, and it explains all of this in more detail there, and I don't wanna to spend too much time on that. So then we have our parameters, and what I've done is I've put them into this Params. Uh, params is a audio processor value tree state object. And once again, I've explained this in previous tutorials, just want to show you what I've done so it doesn't look like there's a, a whole bunch of new stuff just showing up. And in here, I call the create parameters function. And so this, when your plugin first initializes, it needs a list of the parameters that you have for the plugin. And that's what that's doing. That's actually creating the parameters. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to put these parameters into their appropriate places. So here they are. Uh, we have our read from buffer function. And what we want to do is we want to put delay MS in here. And what we need to do, and I thought I'd do this in real time just because I think for people that are learning, this is better if I just do this in real time and explain as I'm doing it, um, that uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take these parameters and we're actually going to put them in. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, let's go back to the Juice API for a moment. And if I go into the audio processor value tree state um, class, there is a function called get raw parameter value. And we see that this returns a uh, stood atomic float pointer. Okay, so this is how we actually get the value back from our parameter list. So we have this parameter list. At the moment, it only has two parameters. It has the feedback parameter and delay in milliseconds parameter. And what I can do is I can use the parameter ID to actually grab the value back when I need to use it for something. So that's what I'm doing now. So I'm going to say auto uh, delay, uh, I'll call it delay time equals, uh, so our, the name of our audio processor value tree state object is called params, get raw parameter value. And I think I called this delay MS. So this is how this actually gets the value back from this parameter list. So here we go. I'm just gonna pop that in there like that. And then so now rather than a half second delay, I can have a delay time that's going to be uh, variable depending on what the user selects with uh, this parameter. So since this is a audio, uh, since this is a stood atomic float pointer, uh, what we need to do is we're going to need to deduce this. So it's, uh, so we have a pointer delay time. So I believe it would be delay time load that will give us what we need there just make sure that that is fine i believe that's that's fine there so now we have this uh, float this atomic float that is going to be variable that is going to control the delay time for the user we just need to do the same thing for feedback so um i might say auto gain equals params. So once again, we're just getting the value of this parameter from our parameter list. So it's get raw parameter value. And in this case, it would be feedback. So here we go. And then as you can see, there are a lot of places where this G is being used. So what I will do is I will just replace a 0 0.7 with um, gain load like that. Okay, and we should be fine. Okay, so let's just build this, make sure that this actually builds okay. Okay, and here we are in Ableton, and we can see that uh, everything is loaded fine, but we see that we don't have anything yet for our UI. So normally this would be the part where we go into our plugin editor and we start creating sliders and dials to control our parameters, but I'm actually going to show you a little secret. There's a much quicker way to do this where you can prototype one of these uh, plugins very quickly. So we will just exit out of this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into this function in our plugin processor. So there's a, there's a function that's called create editor. And we can see that currently it returns a new circular buffer delay audio processor editor, which would be one of these, these plugin editors that we, where we would normally create our sliders and dials but there's actually a class. If I go back here and I search for generic audio processor editor, this class will actually dynamically create a just, just a generic uh, juice UI from the parameters that we've listed. So we have currently two parameters, delay in milliseconds and feedback. And so what it'll do is it'll actually look at these and say, okay, these are floats and we can actually create a slider that actually controls this. It'll just be, it won't be anything fancy. It'll just be a uh, default juice slider, but it's a great way to prototype the effects out. So what I'll do is I will just take this and I will replace this with a juice generic 
audio processor editor. And now we will build and I'll come back after this is built. Okay, we're back. And as you can see, what we have is a plugin that actually has two sliders that correspond with the two parameters that we had in our audio processor value tree state, delay and feedback. And these are just two generic juice sliders, but it's like I said, it's a very quick way to prototype something out and actually create a plugin and test it out quickly without needing to create a whole separate UI. Uh, so let's just go ahead and make sure this actually works. So I'm going to play this beat. Great, so you can actually see that this actually works. This plugin and this delay actually works. One thing that you may notice if you've got a very keen ear is that as I was changing the delay in milliseconds, you were hearing popping and discontinuities in the audio. That's something that we don't want. And in our next tutorial, we're going to show you how to use the linear smooth value class to actually smooth out those changes so you don't hear those those uh, those pops and those clicks anymore and everything is nice and smooth and uh, you can move it as quickly as you want and it will not pop and I'm going to show you that in the next tutorial so if you found this tutorial helpful uh, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you next time